Welcome to the 16 webinar by uh, Tata Discon. It's quite wonderful that I'm sitting in Mumbai in a rainy day on a Saturday and I'm connected to more than 1000 people who have registered for this webinar. It's the technology grab that we are all taking. This is how the technology is helping us in spreading the messages in whatever way we want, whether technology spread. Today, our topic is on safety in rural, rural construction. And this uh, uh, rural construction is being normally a neglected uh, area where the statute trees, where the government agencies or the corporate people normally are not seen. So we will be going to this uh, in a very structured manner. We will be uh, taking, I will be taking you through this uh, a, a PowerPoint presentation. Any questions during this presentation, you can just post it to me. So by end of my presentation, I'll be uh, just answering them as much as possible. Otherwise, maybe offline, I'll answer them. So starting with this is uh, the presentation outline. As you can see, it is stakeholders, process in constructions, hazards and risks, mitigations, personal protective equipment, welfare facilities, and the conclusion. These are the topics that I will be discussing now with you. As you see the home construction, it just uh, some slides have come on your on your uh, mobile or laptop. These are the ways that normally people uh, do construct their houses or buildings. The stakeholders in this are especially first the owners, those who want to have the construction done, or the individuals or the builders, those who want to have the multi-story building built in a rural area. Rural area. The second one comes are the agencies, the material suppliers like cement, steel or polymers or any other material, building material, wood, these things. And third one, it comes with the contractors, those who construct these houses, those who construct these buildings and deploy the workmen. And the last is the government. I would like to share my thoughts on the government. Normally, whenever even my own house when I built. I only went for the uh, planning approvals and all those things to the municipal corporation. After that, when my house is built, I could, didn't see any statutory authorities coming on. It's, the, it's very common that nobody comes to a construction site in a rural area. They don't even see what exactly is happening. And I'm really thanks to Tata Tiscon for arranging this because this is what the awareness is being spread about the construction in the rural area. The second is the process in construction. The viewers may be very well aware of the process. It's a clearing and grabbing. That is you clean the area that you want to construct first. Then there comes excavation. Then comes bar bending, bar bending of the steel to the shooting to your slabs or columns or whatever it is. Then comes the formwork for preparation of the concreting. Then comes concreting. Then comes masonry and plastering. Then comes the finishing and painting. And MEP works do take, they start sometimes from the beginning like electrical works, the plumbing works, but they take a finishing in the last. And finally, for all these things, there is a big process called material handling. You handle cement, you handle uh, uh, iron, you handle uh, various uh, tiles, pipes, electrical cables and all those things. So material handling, how this is done. And uh, to speak first, I would like to take you through that what are the hazards in this construction and associated risks. Risks are the normally the probabilities of happening of an incident. So what are the hazards? The first hazard starts is 
the excavation normally we go for excavation the taller the building the uh, deeper the excavation is and what is the hazard uh, the risk involved in this is the collapse uneven working surfaces which are may cause slips trips and falls and working at height may, may lead to fall from height and very common thing is electricity which may cause electrocution handling of cement and paint and the sort of a chemical materials this causes contact with chemicals they may cause allergy or some sort of a uh, uh, what do you call it uh, skin diseases and workplace how do you access to the workplace access and egress these are the risks how people reach out to the place to work the ladders the sort of a, a jugards they use for going up and down or carrying the material then one thing that very prominently happens is <clears throat> is dust and this dust is invariably inhaled by the persons who are working there and uh, last but not least is the material and machines sometimes you are caught in between at your hands or your legs or your any body part caught in a grinding machine or in a uh, bar bending or any equipment that is used may cause you harm so these are certain hazards and risks we discussed you can see the photographs of the construction how people are how people work through this and these are certain statistics and as you see the word fatal fatal means death viewers will never like to have a person succumb to death because of their construction but it happens the statistics are very scary as the technology is increasing it is again increasing last time in 2006 it was on 11.2 rate now it is 10.1 it seems reduction but because of the uh, advent of the technology maybe some awareness might have spread in fact again i thank this con for using this webinar the technology for reaching the viewers the professionals the students and the uh, the other people general people for knowing what is safety in rural construction the reason is this you can see the construction worker fatality by event or exposure that is slips trips and falls as we discussed all these things contact with objects exposure and violence in the injuries and fires and explosions so this fatal injury rate construction by occupation these are the people who work for you the laborers the first line supervisors the iron steel workers the painters the operatings the pipe layers and the carpenters the roofers they are the people who put the slab on your uh, houses and how do you mitigate now we have discussed the hazards and risks but how do you mitigate we must have a plan for this yes gentlemen uh, viewers we have the collapse is normally can be mitigated by shoring and benching benching is a process of layering the uh, excavation so that the soil doesn't come back onto the person working below shoring is the one where you don't have any place it's a vertical then you shore it through uh, what do you call it anything either by iron or a wood or use any material to stop the excavation from collapsing slip trips having a proper housekeeping this can be avoided fall from height barricading the edges where there is a chance of column fall or edge protection or using a other safety belts or something like that that will help us electrocution of course make sure that all the wires are insulated the joints are insulated the switchboards are protected by elcbs or something like that then contact with chemicals can be very well avoided by using gloves access and egress provide proper ladders or scaffolds either it may be bamboo scaffold or it may be wooden scaffolds so that people can reach to the places very safely inhalation and ignition can be stopped by dust mitigation by mass dust masks 
and caught in between can be very well avoided by a sort of a signaling when a machine is moving or when people are carrying material then a guide person or a guide can very well stop this caught in between now that we have stopped we have talked about the mitigation we will go for a little on to the personal protective equipment viewers can well understand that this is one of the last measure to protect anybody but still we find it very rare in the rural construction in the industrial sector in the corporate sector you can find it but in rural sector very difficult to find because that's an unorganized subject and the very the seminar is for that only to making the viewers very well aware that these things can can stop injuries the personal products for the body are for the head there is a helmet and for the feet it's a shoes these shoes are normally protected with a steel toe in the front so that immediate injury to the toes doesn't happen and ears ear plugs are there there are huge sounds when the steel is cut when the uh, what do you call it the the uh, this uh, wooden form work is made or the uh, tiles are cut there is a huge uh, sound that is made that can be avoided and eyes of course can be protected with goggles the second thing comes fall from height safety belts now they are very common very at a very cheap price they are available unlike last time around 5 to 10 years back they used to cost very high now the safety belt starts as less as 250 to 300 rupees from a reputed manufacturers of course they go very high if for a very good usage or very adapt uses for the other sides otherwise it is available and second thing uh, then electrocution electrocution can be avoided by using gloves as i said insulation is one of the ways but gloves are the best ways these are the protecting your hands from electrocuting using proper uh, shoes insulated shoes so that the electrocution can be avoided welding sometimes we use welding for the rods or for joining or anything this is a very dangerous method viewers please protect these guys they normally don't use the proper welding glasses they must wear it's a hot work and these glasses can be used for welding dust of course can be avoided or protected by dust masks now we have seen that these are certain personal protective equipments which are protecting the workers those who are directly involved in construction now who are to look at these and what are the other facilities viewers must understand that working is different then again the person who is working must be taken care that's why these things are called welfare facilities they are all human they all get hungry they all get tired they all get suffocated by dust or anything they all get frustrated by longer working hours they get uh, uh, what do you call it they may get an ailments so these are called welfare facilities which must be looked at so that these people who are really working there are in good healthy conditions what are they let us one by one the first thing is the basic necessity of a safe drinking water water is the carrier of maximum diseases into the body after the air so air we can take it yes rural is a very pure air and we all love to go to the villages for getting a wonderful good air rather than cities and uh, uh, urban area but water is one thing that must be taken care these workers these people who are working at the rural construction area for their safety for their health safe drinking water must be available at the work spot second thing is where do they eat they do bring maximum i have seen 
in the rural construction this is a family owned skill businesses the people come with their children their parents and everybody working there so the bread they bring their food so we must provide a proper place so that the food they eat is hygienic and that will not create any health issues second thing is place to rest viewers must understand that these workmen do get tired they are not uh, what you call it a machines that they will work long hours 12 hours or 14 hours and they will not get tired a good place for rest will always increase their efficiency also their interest so that no injuries happen to them refreshment yes statutorily it is provided in the biosurable act it is provided you must serve tea you must serve refreshments i don't want to go into the details of the acts and regulations as you seen in my presentation i have avoided all these things because this is human safety is a human touch and viewers must understand that these things if the awareness is spread then as i said in the rural construction statutes are very far away so refreshments and first aid facility the basic thing that is needed any scratch any cut any injury if treated immediately then it will save a lot to the worker to the workman so that he can work for you in a better condition a pain a a person with pain cannot deliver 100% uh, output this is to be understood the first aid facilities are very simple you keep a first aid box and teach them how to wrap the band or anything so that happens accommodation if at all the construction is going beyond certain things and you have any idea or any plan to keep the workers then please provide them a good accommodation so that they can rest properly and come back to the work even carrying to the accommodation taking them away from the from the camp to the place also may take uh, cause injuries and second thing third and the last one is transport how these people are coming are they coming in a proper means or they are getting tired while coming to the uh, workplace that is your construction site so that will also help a lot in keeping these people in a good condition or avoiding injuries to them viewers of various ages professionals students and a uh, a normal citizen may be viewing this in the conclusion i would like to give only one thing the rural construction is very simple and uninterrupted unlike urban construction so the stakeholders are very firm and their schedules and delivery days are very very firm they want their building to be completed within time so that they can do they have their own mohras their own pujas their own times so the workmen may vary may not vary may not differ same group may work but they are unorganized and family run skills as i told you the whole family comes to work in that case one thing has to be very clear one thing has to be very firm that is we must watch their behaviors their attitudes towards the working towards the safety let me tell you no worker will ask you for a personal protective equipment no worker will ask you for a good place to eat no worker will ask you for a ladder no worker will ask you for a and uh, uh, uninsulated cable or anything but it is not their asking it is our giving to them thinking that they are at the lowest cadder they are at the poorest area poorest scale and they are coming to make some construction for you for your benefit so i would request all the viewers to spread this message of safety my only thing to the viewers is bharat बने सुरक्षित देर आर स्लोगन्स ऑन द पोलिटिकल ग्राउंड भारत 
मेरा भारत महान बट दट महान भारत हैज टू बी सुरक्षित दट महान भारत हैज टू बी सेफ and this is not my message it's a vedic message that is coming from ages together that everywhere in every temple in every auspicious occasion we chant the simple message is sarve bhavant sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pasyantu ma kashchit dukham apniyat this is the message the vedas have told so i thank this con for giving this opportunity to me to speak to the varied number of viewers i don't know who are all there on this platform but i thank you all and i want this message to be conveyed to everybody when you go to the your construction place when you go to your village when you go to your suburban lands suburban areas in the cities and you make house then please go to those people how they are working remember i have not told any big laws or statutes simple measures go to that worker and ask did you had any injury because these people when they get injury they don't tell you they just hide it because they know if they tell you that you are injured then they may lose their place and protecting them will be one of the best things that will be doing viewers of various categories thank you very much for joining me on this webinar here is what i conclude my uh, presentation and thank you very much if you want to be in touch with me then my mail id is given jmsrkr60@gmail.com i'll be very much happy to answer any question or or any sort of a query on this construction i can see one question how can access and egress can be a problem when the building rises to certain three floors or four floors then definitely the depth of excavation will go down at least to 1/2 meter or something like that so how does that material is brought up shashank bhattacharya ji how how this uh, uh, what do you call the soil is taken out of that certain so supposing some problem is there in that then he will not be able to come if it is a deep cut he will not be able to come similarly access egress to the first floor while doing concreting so normally they make some bamboo uh, or some wooden uh, platform to walk around and supposing even if the rmc comes they take carry the rm rmc to that first floor so that's what my this thing is that access and egress is one of the uh, biggest problems as far as the rural construction is concerned because they're all having this uh, access and egress through bullies or something like that and another is what is the cost of pp very simple i tell you on a per person basis if you spend just 600 to 1000 rupees sushil sahil sahil garg sahil this is the answer of your question that if you spend just 600 to 1000 rupees per worker you can provide them good pps that whatever i have mentioned on to that and uh, elaborate more on safety against electricity <laughs> uh mishra uh, electricity is one of the silent killers as uh, i tell you in the rural construction uh, as the joints go on you know supposing the lighting is needed or for the concreting vibrator it needs a wire or even for a, a, a anything for a just a cut for a, a, a grinding machine or a cutting machine which is electrical then these electricity joints do happen they don't have earthing so definitely this will help this will help if a better uh, what do you call it insulated wires double insulated wires with the earthing is there then these people will be better protected accommodation i have no which types of accommodation 
when i told accommodation i was thinking on uh, when i was asked to talk about ruler home construction i was not taking a ruler home construction i was taking any ruler construction supposing a mall is built in a ruler way which is a four floor then definitely they house it happened in so many accidents that the people got buried under the uh, what you call it slabs lower slab, because they used to stay there they don't go anywhere supposing your marble technicians your uh, fall ceiling technicians or even even sometimes sometimes if the uh, your uh, electrical technician is not a um, local guy then he will try to stay there to put all his electrical things finish it and go so these accommodation I'm, i was talking about these temporary accommodation that are provided by the owners right below the building when it is under construction so that has to be a reasonably a decent accommodation has to be there so that they do they just don't sleep under the floors Uh, there was one more question I would like to take if the time permits me. Immortal using the knowledge of safety measure. Uh, sir, my question is that we I be an immortal using the knowledge of these safety measures. Sir, we have to. We are all immortals. Because the house or the construction or the building or anything that is made is for our generations we live on there. So it is always our responsibility to take uh, this, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, their uh, safety. Thank you very much, Hidayat Aliji. Thanks a lot for you also uh, for joining in this webinar. Standing on a cantilever, uh, Shashikan Gosaiji can be Gosvi Shashikanji can be avoided if there is just a, a, a projection of the bars is given and a, a rope is just tied, then at least he will not have a direct fall while curing or anything. Normally, you have taken a very good subject called curing, which is done after the slab, and normally one or two persons go for curing. Thank you very much that uh, you have you uh, you have uh, asked me this question. Not only standing on the uh, cantilever, even standing on the edges, they cure. You know, they put that sand, uh, what do you call it, barri um, barriers to so that the water is retained on the top of the floor. So that can help us to fulfill this kind of thing so that we have to do safety any agency to check the safety equipment safety equipments are not checked uh, i mean they check they're all normally is uh, specified uh, uh, mr jayesh so uh, checking is not needed even a, a normal person can check a helmet whether it is a good or bad and safety belt normally it doesn't require much but statutorily it is required every six months you have to check for that fall uh, this thing so the agencies are available but uh, i don't know the rural area the agencies go or not but city suburbs they can be definitely uh, racing yes sir education training why i avoided this word training sir because normally in the rural area they're all as i said they're all mature people they're all uh, organized uh, skill set that is used so traditionally in the corporate world or industrial world, what we use the word called training is normally not uh, uh, training. I only said awareness is to be given to them. This, that's why when I said the medical facilities or welfare facilities or a first aid box is provided, then that will be helping them to in case of anything. Normally this training is normally, it can be given by the engineer who goes there and uh, looks. Uh, Hidayat Ali ji, suppliers names, many are there, Acme is there, Karam is there, Life Care is there. Um, these are the people who supply the safety gears. You can just type it these days, you know, it is difficult to even remember the names of the people. There are so many agencies that have come, so many. These are the big people, the Acme, uh, Karam, 
and uh, Udyogi. These people are big people, but there are so many uh, small scale industries that have come uh, into the uh, market for supplying. That's why I said personal protective equipment. I took in a, because I am a corporate world, so I may not be knowing the uh, right uh, rate. I only went on a higher side saying 600 to 1000. But it can go as below as 400 rupees. You may get all these shoes and uh, helmets and uh, dust masks. Even you, you may get a good dust mask for somewhere around 20, 15 to 20 rupees. Yeah, drug and alcohol, sir, there are very, uh, very serious things that you have asked, Mr. Shashikant. Uh, drug, uh, we have to physically check them. Even in industries also we are suffering. The drug and alcohol abuse is there. Some people do drink and come and uh, when their hangover is not gone, they do drink. But we have to physically check so that they don't uh, either do a mistake, get injured or, uh, as I said, the risks are being born by the guy while he is on, uh, what do you call it, uh, the abuse of uh, drug and alcohol. Even in the industries, we say that smoking is not good because it may cause fire incident because a lot of, uh, what do you call it, the wooden material is available. That also can be one of the uh, precautions that can be taken. So this is what exactly uh, will be going on. Uh, will be on precautions taken for good concrete. Sir, I am not a concrete expert, but I am a safety expert. But good concrete or bad concrete, I cannot say. I will only say that during concrete, the workers must, must and must wear the, uh, what do you call it, plastic, I will say rubber shoes, so that their foot are not being eaten away by the concrete. You know, normally the uh, their, their source will be there in their foot if uh, a proper uh, what you call it, they come with the slippers or any sort of a uh, um, any other exposed uh, if their foot are exposed to concrete so it's very dangerous whenever there is a concreting please ensure that a rubber shoes are used or PVC shoes are used we normally call it a gum shoes in the industrial farina but in the rural area, you may call it a rubber shoes, which are a, a normally rainy season available. That shoes also will help. At least the basic need is fulfilled. Quarrel among labor is a labor issue, sir. You have to set up a full industry onto that. Normally in corporate, we have a IR. But uh, there, yes, please don't be. I will also suggest that being the owner, don't fall into that. Maybe you can remove that gang and put another gang if they are quarreling. And police will be the best resort to uh, uh, resolve the issues. But uh, that may be coming under security, sir, not safety. I'm here to talk about safety. Security is a different perspective altogether. Safety, clothes, shoes, uh, they've been asked. Comforts with this safety clothes. Masonry normally uh, clothes we do not mention. Uh, actually, we give dangries to the welders and uh, uh, what do you call it uh, grinders and all those people because they deal with the hot and uh, dangri is a cotton subject, so it doesn't catch fire. Whereas if a welder uses a normal acrylic or any terracotta or any uh, sort of a material, then it catches fire fast, and he is in the welding area. So normally we suggest any welders are there for the joining the steel or anything, then a dangri is to be used. Otherwise, masons and all those loose clothes are to be avoided. Loose clothes are to be avoided for masons. Uh, we don't feel any uh, a, a normal clothes can do because masons normally handle cement. So cement they don't it doesn't fall on their head their their body, but it doesn't it, it definitely touches their feet on the bottom when it gets a heap up. So during that also they can use the rubber shoes so that the uh, concrete doesn't come directly on the, the plaster or the uh, cement material doesn't come onto the dip load. Sir, 
sir shoring and benching the norms are uh, very simple sir 1.8 meters is the normal depth which a person can go in because it is a, a normal height of a person which we normally says he can come up anything goes below 2 meters or 3 meters we we normally ask either a benching if there is no place for benching then the shoring is to be used because if any collapse is there the person will not be able to come out because it is above his height and normally these people will be sitting and working they will not be standing so anything below 2 meters then we normally ask for the shoring uh, and benching sir cranes are used in the rural construction uh, hari krishna ji i am not uh, very much aware if there are really cranes are used then the crane operator is the best man normally they are the macho guys those who know engineering because nobody else will be there to tell them what exactly is to be told so the operator has to be handled very well and he has to be asked questions specially to check with the electrical lines normally in the rural construction the electricity is distributed through poles so if at all the crane is uh, falling with the electrical lines then it will be very difficult to handle so the the operator must be very well aware if at all you are using a crane in the rural construction then please talk to the crane operator he should have the full knowledge of the slings that he use and uh, the load he is lifting the angle of the load or whatever it is so that the crane doesn't topple and electrical lines are the major hazards for the cranes not at all sir divesh patel ji and uh, jayanti lal patel ji workers ko apne acts ke bare mein ya they, about their act they, they don't have any awareness that's why in my first thing when i used the government agencies i told none of the workers at the rural area are aware of what sort of a facilities i told in the welfare facility that a tea is to be given a refreshment as a tea is to be given it's mandatory for the building and construction uh, workers act canteen facilities these facilities are there but in the rural construction unless a statutory person checks you don't give it as usual sir being human unless the police ask you don't wear a helmet on the roads i'm talking about so similarly in the rural construction this is the major hurdle that our agencies statutory agencies enforcing agencies they don't go there that's why when a tragedy strikes when a tragedy strikes the whole of the department moves they see that nothing is being followed that is why people get buried under the construction in the cities you listen that the the floor eighth floor or three four or five floor building collapsed and the people buried under it a uh, fall from height uh, uh, bhattacharya sir is uh, a, a common it can be done because they are very clever they they know that they will fall they will not do but it is our duty if you talk to me and i normally if i go somewhere then i will say that please protect yourself edge protection is one thing i said which will stop the material from falling from height whether it is instruments or rods or any bars or any sort of a thing that is kept in the floor or anything falling on them that's what is uh, being Uh, done. So labor officer uh, Srinivas nursing lo. Uh, Srinivas ji normally, as I told you, labor officers they come, they may take attendance or something like that. But enforcing authorities, in the, as per the Bureau of Civil Liability Act is concerned, it is under the Ministry of Labor. So normally the engineering side of it is normally neglected most on to the labor side is taken care like attendance their welfare their uh, what do you call it insurance and all these things are care, taken care whether casting or footing can be allowed with a foundation with filled water arnav das ji a bit a technical question on the safety i may not say anything but it is not allowed normally 
normally while plastering rural area and single scaffolding often used what additional precaution scaffolding used as i said i have not used even my word scaffolding in this my presentation it's a big word when you go to rural construction unless it is a, a a big company which is using a scaffolding i said the bamboo and the uh, bullies are used to uh, to protect to uh, what do you call it uh, support a deck so a single column or whatever it is a proper access as i said the access to the place of work for the concreting or for the bar bending or for the form of fixing form fixing all these things have to be done a proper access at least a simple ladder has to be provided otherwise there is a likely chance of falling if at all you think nothing can be provided then you have to put a bolt and give a, him a lifeline there so that he doesn't fall while doing his job there So as per uh, and uh, I thank uh, once again uh, Tata Tiscon, wonderful platform. But for this, but for this platform, I would not have reached in my career of 20 years. I normally address 20 people or 30 people in a conference, or maybe when I go to conference, talk to 45 minutes, I may be addressing 100 people. Thanks to Tata Tiscon and uh, uh, eDiscovery, I will ask them to extend these sessions more and more so that people are more and more knowledgeable about the simple safety measures and ultimately our aim is no injury no harm to any human being because we love prosperity let us live in prosperity any questions are there my email address is given on my presentation jmsrkr60 at the rate gmail.com you can write to me i'll be very happy to give you any queries that is needed but not on a consultant basis just on a freelance basis okay so thank you very much tata tiscon for providing this platform thanks a lot all the viewers who have patiently listened to me and uh, if at all i have uh, any sort of a errors or any sort of a uh, if i have done any mistakes and please forgive me for that and I am ready to correct if at all any suggestions are given on these precautions that I have told about the rural construction. Let us make our India a great India. We are developing. We will be needing more and more construction. As our Prime Minister says that everybody should have a house by 2022. So please do watch whenever you go to a rural area for a safe construction methods. But for whatever the knowledge that we have. Thank you very much, sirs. Thanks a lot. And uh, as I said, I'll be in touch if at all some queries made to me. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.